This is Sunday, and we are here with the power and uh, work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. I see Mimo. I see Jeanette, family from way out in Georgia. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Yes, this is your girl, no longer bound. You know that didn't want to be the new here. YouTube.com forward slash Esther Pinkston. Yes, and we are one of the evangelists and ministers at the Ark of Jesus Ministry, which is 1000 Wenton Road North in Rochester, New York. We're also one of the members of the Acoma African American Women's Gospel Choir. We're a vocalist there, and that is Acoma, A K O M A dot org, Women Gospel Choir. Guitars, keyboarders, recording artists. You know, we got our song out. No longer bound, guys. Make sure if you haven't listened to it, get it, get it, get it, get it. I heard that it's a blessing, and I thank God for it. And we also do uh, YouTube creating content. Amen. God bless you. We're here on Sundays. We're here on Wednesdays. And we're here on Fridays until the Lord say the same. So let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you. We worship you. We praise you. We magnify you. We give you all the honor and all the glory that is due your name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Guys, we are here. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. We are here to talk about the Holy Spirit. Do you believe in sudden conversion? What is conversion? When you've been turned around, you hear people say, I've been converted. They used to say in the, in the, uh, in the Methodist church when I was growing up, she's been converted. She's, she's accepted Jesus as a Lord to say she's been converted. She's turned around. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that tells, I think it was, he says, when thou art converted, then you go and convince your brethren. You let them know about what, ha what the change has happened to you. It says, our author says, I believe in something far more wonderful than sudden conversion. Conversion is good. That's a beautiful step. You got to get converted. You got to get turned around. You got to get your mind changed. Amen. 
we got to change direction. Hallelujah. And when we say repent, repent means to turn from when you were going wrong. Amen. And convert it. You repent and be baptized. Repent and be saved. Be converted. Amen. Yes. So what we're seeing here today that there's something even better, even greater, I would say. Okay. And, and the author is saying, I believe in certain regeneration. That's when God can give you, he completely regenerates your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Conversion is merely an outward thing. That's what everybody sees. They hear that you turned around. Amen. They say, well, okay, she used to go to the nightclubs, but now she's going to church. You know, she used to do this, but now she's doing that. So she turned around. She made a turn. Remember what I just said, you know, the scripture, Peter preach, repent and be baptized. Amen. Turn around, turn away. But regeneration goes down to the deepest depths of the inmost soul. Huh? It's transforming our thoughts now, our affections now, our will. It's the whole inward man now. I believe in sudden regeneration because the Bible teaches it and because I have seen it in times without number. That's how author saying it. I've seen it as well. It's, I believe in sudden regeneration because I have experienced it. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. We are sometimes told that, quote, the religion of the future will not teach such, uh, such miraculous conversion, uh, unquote. Uh, if the religion of the future does not teach such miraculous conversion, if it does not teach something far more meaningful, sudden miraculous regeneration by the power, say power, by the power of the Holy Spirit, then the religion of the future will not be in conformity with the facts of experience and so will not be scientific. It will miss one of the most certain and most glorious of all truths. Man devised religions in the past have often missed the truth and man devised religions in the future will doubtless do the same. But the religion of God, hey, hallelujah, has revealed in his word and the religion that God confirms in experience teaches sudden regeneration by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. In other words, God can do it and he can do it today. It doesn't take him forever to do it. The Holy Spirit calls you. The Holy, excuse me. The Holy Spirit calls you. He draws you, and He can change you. And Amen. Hallelujah. Minister unto you the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Oh my God. I don't want to get it. Let me just keep going. He said. He said. If I did not believe in the regeneration by the power of the Holy Spirit, I would quit preaching. Hallelujah. What would be the use in facing great audiences in which there were multitudes of men and women hardened and seared, caring for nothing but the things of the world and the flesh with no high and holy aspirations, with no outlook beyond money and fame and power and pleasure? If it were not for the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. They can be changed. We got to have something to present and it's the power of God. Oh, let me go on. But with the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit, there is every use for the preacher can never tell where the Spirit of God is going to strike and do a mighty work. Now, when you say strike, he doesn't mean like the lightning bolt is going to come down and hit somebody. That's not the Holy Spirit. The people don't need to be afraid. They, they've really gone way out with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will make you knock over tables and chairs. And the Holy Spirit will make you do flip-flops. And the Holy Spirit will make it. No, 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 no. That's not what the power of God does. The power of God is like the wind. You can't see him, but you can feel him. And I need you to always remember that God is love. God is a spirit and God is the spirit of love. Okay? So love heals, love draws, amen? Love blesses, amen? Hallelujah. But I need you to know God's love is powerful. Please don't forget that, amen? 
Amen, hallelujah. So when he says strike, he's not going to, what he means is, in, a, in another way of saying it is touch. You never know where the Holy Spirit is going to touch. He's going to move in a miraculous way. Many people can be in the service, amen, and God wants to minister to you. So the Holy Spirit knows how to go and touch your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says here, there sits before you a man who is a gambler, all right, or a drunkard, all right, or a libertine, you know, whatever somebody just use, whatever they do. I don't know that word. There does not seem to be much use in preaching to him, but you can never tell. But that very night, the Spirit of God will touch that man's heart and transform him into one of the holiest and most useful men of God. Oh, God, I love this. Oh, my God, I love this. Did I tell you? Did I tell you about the, 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 the my friend who was a full-blown alcoholic? I'll never forget it. As a matter of fact, he was on, he was, he was, I lived on the, on one of the main streets here in Rochester and at that time and and actually it was right across the, the, the way from a bar the bar was on one side and I was on the other side where we lived and, and houses and yes in the city and and this gentleman he he would drink he was a drunkard full of flesh I mean early in the morning you see him he's drinking late in the evening you see him he's drinking that's what he did he was what we would call a wine or a drunkard or whatever and so the world then saw him as just that old wino, a drunkard, or whatever. Amen. But I, I, I he, he would, he would watch my family and me. People watch you, by the way. I want to make sure you get that. He would watch us, and he, he had, he had gotten our, 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 our schedule down. He knew on Sunday mornings what time we were going to be leaving for worship. And he knew what time we were going to be coming back. He knew he was there. So he got bold enough one day till he walked over and he saw me. And he said, do you have a Bible I can read? Well, of course, you know, uh, uh, I never put anyone down. Thank God for Jesus because of this street ministry. The Lord let me know if he saved me, he can save anyone. Amen. But there were others who were saying, well, you know, now that man is not going to read that Bible. I don't know why you want to give him that Bible. And I said, well, I, hey, he asked for the Bible. I want to give him the Bible. So I gave him the Bible. And uh, he said, I'll give it back to you. And he kept it for a while. I told him, no, keep it, you know, and, and read it. So he kept it and he was reading it. And uh, he came to me one day and he says, well, I don't understand a certain portion over here and over there. I said, well, you know, it's all right. I said, you, you, you read over here. And then when you like, you're welcome to come and, 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 and visit church service with me. Well, he took me up on it, and he came to one of or two of our services. Now, I want you to know, when people come, and they, they're on the street, they're not going to come like you think they ought to come, and they're not going to come acting like you think they should act and talking like you think they should talk, wearing what you think they should wear. He came just as he was, thank God for Jesus. And he came, and he, uh, he, he, he wanted attention, though, so he would kind of um, interrupt in the service and he'd do some things. So we kindly uh, one of the, the uh, ministers ushers kind of kindly went to him and said, you know, no, no, no. Just listen. Just listen. Okay? You know, right now, <clears throat> while the pastor is speaking, we are listening. And that way we'll, you'll hear what the word has to say. No one put him out of the church. Now we've had occasions where that happened somewhere else. I'll tell that story another time. That did not end up so well. But this gentleman was not put out of the church, thank God for Jesus. I invited him in. That would have been an awful thing to have him be put out. But he came in and, and he, was, he was encouraged to just listen. And so I think he came back maybe twice. And then after that, I didn't see him again. I didn't see him sitting on the, the stoop out there in the mornings. I didn't see him in the evenings. So I began to wonder what happened to him. What? What? Where'd he go? And later I found out on my job, I was working with his brother and I didn't know it. So someone told me that. So I asked my, my partner at work, I said, do you have a brother? And he kind of drinks a little and kind of sit, you know, across from the bar over on Surgeon's Street. 
He said, yeah. He said, that's my brother. I said, I've been talking to him. And I said, I don't, where is he? I, I don't know where he is. He said, oh, he checked himself in to uh, one of the rehab centers and so he can get himself dried out. I said, oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Long story short, the man checked himself in. He got himself dried out from alcohol. He said that his uh, previous boss that where he used to work told him if he get himself dried out, he would give him, him, give him his job back, his old job back, and he was a driver. He was a driver that drove cars and would pick up um, disabled people for a company. And um, so he got his job back. And so I still didn't get to talk to him until one day we ended up at the same corner store that we both were shopping at across from where I lived. And I saw him and I said, well, how are you? How are you doing? He was neatly dressed, had all this uniform, he was driving a company car. He says, I'm doing really good now. And I said, well, are you still, you know, walking with the Lord? He said, yeah. He said, I went back to my old church. And I said, well, thank God for Jesus. Amen. Shortly after that, I heard from his brother that he passed away. <laughs> God can. We never underestimate the power of the Holy Ghost. And we never give up on anyone. I don't care how bad they look. I don't care what they sound like. The world can say, lock them up, throw away the key, or do whatever you feel necessary. But the Holy Spirit can touch a person no matter how wealthy they are, no matter how lowly they look. Let's move on real quick. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Okay. All right. So here we go here. So he's saying, all right, it has often occurred in the past it will doubtless occur in the future. There sits before you a woman who is a, who is a mere butterfly of fashion. She seems to have no thought about society and pleasure and adulation. Why? Why preach to her? Why, why, why preach the word of God to her? Jesus. Without the regeneration, the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit, it would be foolishness and a waste of time. But you can never tell. You can never tell. Perhaps this very night, the Spirit of God will shine in that darkened heart and open the eyes of that woman to see the beauty of Jesus Christ, and she may receive him, and then there the life of God be imparted by the power of the Holy Spirit to that trifling soul. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to stop right there. And we're going to pick it up from there next time because we want to pray. We want to pray, hallelujah, oh God, for souls. We want to pray for souls. Amen. We want to pray for families um, that uh, our mothers are, are praying for their children uh, to be to be saved hallelujah and 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 we want to pray hallelujah oh my god I I, I I asked the Lord touched my heart to do this and it's uh this is a different book I'm coming out of now but you can get it if you like it is praying mothers oh Lord save my children and and we want to go there. We want to go there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Holy Spirit of God, the power of God. This prayer says, my children. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way today. It's a short prayer. It says, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I bind the spirit of Satan that is influencing, controlling, and manipulating the mind and the heart of my children from accepting the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I break and destroy the power, authority, influence, and manipulative hold 
rebuke the spirit of Satan have over the life of my children. I command you to desist in your maneuvers and manipulation of my children's life. I spoil your house <coughs> according to the word of God. I enter into it to deliver my children from your hands. I loose my children from every manipulative hold, grip, power, authority, and influence that has kept them from being saved. I cast you spirit of Satan out of my children's mind, heart, life, in Jesus' name. I declare that my children shall believe the gospel, receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, and be saved in Jesus' name. God bless you mothers. God bless you even fathers. This is mothers, but fathers as well. Anyone that is praying for salvation of your loved one, I pray right now that they be saved, that the Holy Spirit will go into the bars, into the highways, into the byways, Lord, into where we call skin roll, to wherever it may be, into the crack house, wherever it may be. Holy Spirit, we release you to go right now in the name of Jesus and draw these souls, draw these souls unto you. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and we thank you, Lord, and we bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you all. This is your girl, No Longer Bound. We will see you next time.